This year has not changed how wide and diverse agriculture really is. It goes beyond the soil beneath our feet and even beyond our earth. While we might not realize it, space and gravity play a huge role in our understanding of modern day agricultural practices. If we are to become the problem solvers of tomorrow, we have to think outside of the box and sometimes even outside of this world with who we partner with to find innovative solutions. Today, we have the honor of hearing from a former U.S. Congressman and U.S. Navy pilot. Here to share current practices on how we can feed our world's ever-growing population, please help me in welcoming the 13th Administrator of the National Aeronautics Space Administration, Mr. Jim Bridenstine. Hi, my name is Jim Bridenstein, and I'm the NASA Administrator. It is wonderful to be with you at the 93rd Annual National FFA Convention. I want to say that a lot of times people, when they think of NASA, they don't think of agriculture. But maybe I can, I can change that notion for a lot of people today. First of all, I want to make sure people know, you recently saw American astronauts launch on American rockets from American soil for the first time since 2011. And that was a monumental achievement for our nation. We've got a new program now where we are in fact not just going to low Earth orbit, but we're going to be flying astronauts all the way to the moon sustainably with an intention of ultimately getting to Mars. And when we think about NASA and agriculture, we have to think about how are we going to live and work on other worlds for long periods of time? How are we going to sustain human life on the way to these other worlds like Mars? And of course, all of this requires us to be able to create the food and the resources necessary to survive for long periods of time, and part of that is, of course, agriculture. We need to be able to grow plants in microgravity and, and harsh radiation environments. Someday we're even going to need to be able to grow plants on other worlds so that we can sustain life on these other worlds. But see, when it comes to NASA and agriculture, it's not just about going to these other worlds and using plants as life support, but it's also about how do we use space right now today to benefit human life and increase agriculture production on the earth, feeding more of the world than ever before. Well, it just so happens that NASA has a very robust earth science capability that is being used to benefit agriculture right now today. So when we think about evaporation from soil and a plant that, that transpires, that, that in, in fact breathes, we're able to measure that evapotranspiration measurement from space and get very precise irrigation plans in place. And we can get those plans down to a quarter of an acre in size. In other words, we're able to increase crop yields while reducing water usage by as much as 25% and, and reducing the erosion of nitrates in the soil. So what actually happens is when you water less, although very precisely, when you water less, you're able to preserve those nitrates, which is why your plant yields can actually increase. And all of these, um, these capabilities are being proven that using a, a mission that we call Landsat from space, a satellite built by NASA, now operated by the U.S. Geological Survey, we can actually prove these technologies and capabilities to increase crop yields and feed more of the world than ever before. But that's just one mission that we have underway right now. As we speak, we have a mission called EcoStress that is attached to the International Space Station that can measure from space the temperature of plants. And it so happens that when plants are under stress from an irrigation perspective, their stomata close, how they transpire changes the temperature of the plant. And when that happens, we can see it from space long before a farmer can see it with their own eyeballs. And we can make warnings and we can change irrigation plans based on the stress of that plant. We're proving this capability out right now on the International Space Station, but we see a day in the future where we could have commercial constellations, large constellations in low Earth orbit informing farmers how to increase their crop yields um, and or pre pre you know, prevent their crops from da being damaged uh, by not receiving enough water at the right time during certain events, like drought. 
And in fact, NASA has a mission that deals specifically with drought. We call the mission GRACE. What we're doing with the GRACE mission is we're actually measuring the gravity of the Earth. Th so think of two satellites flying in formation with each other, and what happens is the, the, the Earth's gravity, which is not uniform, can actually be measured. So if, if, if a satellite, the, the satellite in the front is approaching a mountain range, it actually accelerates because the gravity of the Earth, where that mountain range is, is actually higher than the gravity of the Earth in other places. You see, gravity is based on mass, and the more mass of the Earth, the higher the gravity. I know a lot of people don't realize it, but the gravity is not uniform throughout the entire Earth system. So as the first satellite approaches the mountain range, it accelerates. The second satellite is measuring the distance between the two satellites, and eventually it will catch up as it also approaches the mountain range. And you can very precisely measure the gravity of the Earth right there at that mountain range. Well, it so happens that there are times when the Earth's gravity changes. And the question is why? Well, it's because water moves. And, and when the water moves, whether it's more water in the ocean or more water over land, we can measure that movement by changes in gravity using NASA's GRACE system. And what's even more amazing is we're taking that knowledge and information and we're able to predict very precisely ahead of time when and where there will be a drought and so water managers can make the right decisions to mitigate that drought ahead of time. We have actually put this into place and we have worked it for nations all over the world where we have saved the American taxpayer millions of dollars so instead of providing relief to a nation that has had drought we can actually preempt that drought and not ultimately have to provide the relief because people's lives aren't damaged. So these are just some of the missions that NASA is working on right now today that are benefiting agriculture. A and of course the future is even more bright. Uh, we see a day when we're going to feed more of the world than ever before and, and a farmer um, is going to be able to go out into their field and stand there with their handheld device and get very precise measurements for what they need to do from a nutrition perspective, what they need to do from an ir irrigation pers perspective, and make those determinations to increase their crop yields, reduce water use, preserve the nitrates in the soil, and when those nitrates, of course, get into the water supply, it costs millions of dollars to clean that water supply. So all of these things, I think, are important for NASA to continue to advance because we have this important earth science uh, requirement. We, we have been charged with making sure we understand the earth better than ever before and now we're taking those capabilities and applying them to agriculture. So here's the thing, it's not just agriculture. Right now we're communicating um, and maybe some of you are going to watch this using the internet. Maybe you have internet broadband from space. Maybe this will be presented on NASA TV so you'll, you might watch it on Dish Network or maybe DirecTV. Uh, maybe some people could listen to this on XM Radio, for example. All of these are examples of space-based communications born from this little agency called NASA. But it's not just how we communicate, it's also how we navigate, how we produce food, as we just talked about, how we produce energy, how we do disaster relief and national security, how we predict weather. That's critically important for agriculture. 80% of the data that feeds the numerical weather models so you know when and where the next rain shower is going to take place. That data is coming from satellites operated by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, but they were built by NASA. So our capabilities for weather prediction and understanding climate are robust um, and important to the future of agriculture. So when you see American astronauts launch on American rockets from American soil, and you see us take that next giant leap where we're going to the moon with the, the first woman and the next man under the Artemis program. And ultimately when you see NASA taking our astronauts all the way to Mars and using plant science to make those lives sustainable on other worlds for long periods of time, remember this, that while NASA is in many ways a space exploration organization, we are also very involved in improving lives right here on Earth, and we do it every day. We've had a memorandum of understanding with the Department of Agriculture for many years, and in fact right now we're, 
we are updating that cooperation between the Department of Agriculture and NASA so that both of our agencies can do better work. So I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to address the 93rd Annual Convention of the FFA. What an amazing opportunity, and I hope you all have an amazing convention.